Welcome to an introduction to building Max externals. This video will focus on setting up projects and compiling them, specifically version 8.2 of the Max SDK or the min dev kit. It will cover what has changed with version 8.2 and walk through an example of compiling Max externals. It will not cover writing the source code for externals, but you can find more information on how to write externals using the included documentation. For the Max SDK, it is available bundled with the SDK, as well as online at cycling74.com slash SDK slash Max SDK 8.2.0. For min, the documentation is cycling74.github.io slash min dev kit. The difference between the Max SDK and the min dev kit is that the Max SDK is a C-based implementation and the min dev kit is a C++ wrapper of the Max SDK. First, let's look at a chart that shows the relationship between different repositories and how it has changed with the 8.2 release. Before 8.2, the min dev kit and Max SDK were slightly different. The Max SDK was on its own, and the min dev kit had a few dependencies. The Max API acted as the low-level binding interface, and the min API had headers which wrapped those bindings into a modern C++ interface. Now with the 8.2 release, both min and Max include the same base headers. Max SDK base contains headers that can be included in either a Max or min project. In order for this to work, the base headers now support C++ namespaces and use enums in the place of some defines. This change deprecated the need for the old Max API. Likely the biggest practical change to the SDK for developers is the modernization of the build system to use CMake. To see what this difference looks like, take a peek at the tag from the previous release of the Max SDK. You can see the Xcode projects and Visual Studio projects were included inside the source directories. Now instead, there are files called cmakelists.txt. These cmakelists are essentially a universal way of defining a project setup. You declare which headers need to be included, which source files you're compiling, and then the output, which in the case of a max external is a library. Then you use cmake to generate whichever build system you want, whether it's a Visual Studio solution or an Xcode project, or even make files, for example. Let me show you an example of the CMake workflow using the Max SDK. If you're a user of the min dev kit, this workflow is likely old news to you because the workflow is exactly the same. OK, so first you'll need to have git, CMake, and a compiler installed on your system. Once you have those set up, you can clone the Max SDK repository. Make sure that you also run git submodule update dash dash init dash dash recursive because a git clone does not fetch the submodule repositories. If we don't update the submodules, we'll be missing the max SDK base and we'll catch errors later on when we try to compile. With the source code fetched now, you'll create a build directory because a principle of CMake is to separate build files from source files. A benefit of this is that keeping a separate build directory allows you to easily clean up after a build if you want to start fresh. You just delete the entire directory. Before you tell CMake to generate a build in this directory, you should decide which kind of build generator you want. To get the different possibilities from your system, run cmake-help, and it'll tell you which options are available. So you can see here on Mac, I can pick from any of these options. The star tells me that the default is Unix make files, but for this demonstration, I would like to show generating Xcode projects, because Mac developers are likely already comfortable and familiar with using Xcode. OK, so now inside the build directory, I'll run cmake-g xcode dot dot. The reason for the dot dot is that we need to tell CMake where the base CMake lists is. This base CMake lists is where all the subprojects are declared, and that's how CMake knows where all those individual CMake lists are for each individual Max external project. After running the generation step, we can look inside the build directory and see that there is now an Xcode project ready for us to use like we're used to. There are also separate projects for each individual external if you prefer to use those. Notice that now there is also the ability to build natively for Apple Silicon here in Xcode. From here on, you won't need to use CMake to generate the project unless you want to create a new Max external or you change one of the CMake lists. If you want, you can also use CMake to run a build from the command line with CMake dash dash build dot within your build directory. This is useful if, for some reason, you don't want to open your IDE. I often use an external text editor instead of Xcode, so I personally love this feature. The process for doing this on Windows is very similar. You can provide, for example, the Visual Studio generator, and CMake will generate Visual Studio solutions for you. All right, thanks for watching, and if you have questions, please reach out on the Cycling74 forums. Happy patching!